Frank, still severely normal. Today I uh, want to continue my uh, appeal to Mr. Gene. And this is the last one where I'm going to appeal to Mr. Gene. Because I don't know if Mr. Gene's right for the job, but it's looking more and more like Mr. Gene only re-entered politics again so he could secure that wild rose so that <coughs> things could get combined. But Mr. Gene said he only entered politics because he wanted to fix things because he didn't want any other parent to suffer what he suffered as he watched his son die. So I'm going to appeal to him one more time as a human being. As a legislature, as a parliamentarian, as a human being. Now, Mr. Gene, I know you're not in our class. We all know that. You were up here for 10 or 11 years at the, at the federal lever, level with Mr. Harper sitting beside Mr. Prentice and Mr. Kenny in the cabinet. So that's, that's your station and you're still there. In fact, I've heard it said that your family holdings have increased from $2 million to $20 million in the last short while, 10 years or so, uh, that wouldn't have anything to do with the $170,000 you took out of the taxpayer's purse. And I'm not saying you didn't earn it, sir. What I'm saying to you is to understand that most people don't have incomes like that. <clears throat> now, currently leader of Her Majesty's official opposition, and his mother was invited for tea with Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham Palace. I don't know anybody whose mother was invited for tea with Queen Elizabeth at Buckingham Palace. But anyway, I first, I was aware of you, but I first, when the boy jumped out, when you said you wanted to fix things, after Mr. Prentice did what Mr. Prentice did with the Wild Rose and with the traitorous Daniel Smith, and you said, oh, I'm going to fix things. It looks to me like you just want to tie things up for the conservative brand of Canada to rule the Alberta taxpayers forever and ever. But I'm appealing to you. This, what I said, down to 125, I meant that. And I'll tell you something. At $125,000 a year, after 10 years, you would still be well clear of the middle class. So what I'm saying here, Brian, is I'm not adding to this because this isn't all done. So when it says remuneration for elected officials must better reflect the realities of the constituents, when I say that the premier salary should be no more than two and a half times the median income in the province or in the country. <clears throat> the system allows you to get a raise because this system of bringing the money in, of bringing the money down to the bottom, lifts the median income. So if you're making two and a half times and the median income rises five dollars, guess what? Your income rises Five plus five plus two dollars and fifty cents. And the average person's income only rises five. Yours gets to rise twelve dollars and fifty cents. Wow. Because you're not average. So this would be tied to the median income. Income times two and a half. And it would stay there. And when you raise the median income up to $60,000, you just got yourself, if it went from 50 to 60, you just got yourself a $25,000 raise because you did something for the people. <clears throat> this system that I'm laying out here, and I intend to finish laying out over the next few videos, will bring more money down into the lower classes, lift some people that are down here up into the middle class, it might bring a few of these people into the middle. Guess what? My system will grow the middle class. Something every politician says they can do, but not one of them knows how to do. 
Brian, I'm not going to beg you to come down here and join me. You can stay up there with your people. But if you do, I'm going to bring you down too. I'm trying to bring the political class down with us. Folks, that's the end of this video. Brian, have a nice day.